We're late. 842? We're late. No one knew we were going to anyway. You, why did you make us late? It's the lighting. Why did you make us late, babe? Because we're waiting for sour dragons to jump on. It's all your fault. <laughs> it's all your fault. You did this. Why did you make yeah. us late? Uh, you know how important it is for me. Yeah. Babe. It's all your fault. What else? What else is your fault? Bearded Mowing Dad. Ooh, oh, no, that's his name. That's a cool name. What's up, Sour Dragon? It's all your fault. Yeah. Why'd you do that to me? Why are you doing this? Your fault. Has anyone been in a relationship like that before? Oof. I don't do it wrong. You do it wrong. You, you, you. It's all you, your fault. You, you. It's all your fault. You ever heard that before? Yeah. You guys ever, you guys ever have somebody who's blame throwing? Your fault. You did this to me. You did that. You're amazing. Hey, listen, bearded mowing dad, you know. <laughs> you know what a good beard is. I appreciate you. Honor to you, man. One takes a good one to know one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You gotta fill out that whole beard. Yep. And you having a beautiful beard, it's... that's all your fault. We're so quick to say who's wrong, who's right, who's blah, 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 blah. It's all yeah, your fault. It you did it. It's your, your fault. fault. You did it. You're the bad one. Oh, You're the reason gosh. it's wrong. Your fault. Your fault. You ever do it, babe? No, I've never done that. You've never done no, it? Never. Yeah, right. It's all your never. fault that everybody does it. Now you see what I did. Aha. Good job. Blame throwing is an interesting thing. Very funny. So one of the things I see with people when we get into this stuff is look at the blame, shame, and judgment. It's always a really funny thing. Are you on Troll Patrol, baby? You got it? Got it. You got it. Troll right. Patrol. Troll Patrol. <laughs> Whose fault is it to kill the trolls? Your fault. You're a troll killer. Yeah. Yeah, you are. I actually like that. It's all your fault. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so you guys ever have anybody who blame throws? What's up, Bo? Good to see you. You ever anybody who's like just a blame thrower? Now, this is probably somebody at work or someone in your family or someone you used to date. Somebody's a blame thrower. Yeah, yeah. well, so you're the one who did it. Why don't you ever do anything around here? Well, we wouldn't have this problem if you would have only you. done this. You, 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 you. Why aren't you doing this enough? Why aren't you? I always like that one. You, you, you. Yeah. Have we ever had those fights, babe? Yeah. Whose fault was it? Yours. Yours. You did it. <laughs> I mean, who would want to argue with you? You? It's my You do. <laughs> you make me. Yeah, Sorry, Jenna just... Greg said it because I don't want to. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. All right. Blame throwing is interesting. Blame throwing, shaming, guilt, judgment. Man, is everybody really quick to say who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad? We want to tell everybody mm -hmm. whose fault it is. You know what's funny about this? Mm -hmm. I had an interesting thought. I'm going to throw it out to you guys. This is the first time that I put this out here. Something that's interesting with me. Like, when it comes to blaming, obviously, there's going to be a low level of accountability. It can't be my fault. It's got to be your fault. So, for some of my warriors, I got some of you warriors in here already. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Or what phase am I in? Or what spot in my own race to acceptance am I stuck in? When I can't see the reality of whose fault it is, I just blame everybody else instead of having accountability for my own part in this game. What what spot am I stuck in, Warriors? You guys see it? Yep, yeah, it's it's a good guess. It's not bargaining, but it's a good guess. I love my water, baby. Come on. There he is. Good job, Bo. He's not Daniel, but it's denial. <laughs> Auto correct. <laughs> I'm new. Is this a study or what? Not being rude. Just curious. Fair enough question. We go into all types of stuff. So bearded mom and dad, what we do is uh it's actually we didn't start off with our normal stuff. <clears throat> all right. So um my name's Rick. I'm the author of Everything's a Choice, creator of The Warrior's Way. I work with men for years. Now we work with both men and women, and we've created a program that literally breaks the curses that we have in our life from fear, doubt, anxiety, depression, denial, going through all the stuff that people have been going through their life where the hardest fight you've ever had is in here. And so I help people train and fight and learn how to break those curses. 
So this is us just doing freebies. We're just answering questions, helping people out, and just doing what we can. Is your book on Audible? There's only one reason it's not. I've had a lot of people go, hey, I want to do the Audible for your book, but they're like, you should do it yourself. And honestly, I'll just be real with you. I've been writing this next book, working with this program, working with people across the world. I just haven't. So it's your fault it a, that we don't have an audible. It's my <laughs> fault. It is all my fault. I don't have an audible. I haven't made it a priority. And so, uh, yeah, what I do is it, just really, yeah. we just go in and we help people get out of hell. We break the curse. And that's an understatement. Fun. Like it the is. the men, we we are newer to having the women's group. Um, and how many weeks are they in? Nine? Oh uh, no, they're on their tenth week. Tenth week. Though. He runs multiple men's groups at a time, but the uh, there's some warriors on here, the men that have been in this group. He is changing people's lives, truly is changing people's lives. So um, I wanted to make sure that I, I shared that. He's making a difference and everything's done on Zoom. It's not where you have to come to an office or something like that. It's done on Zoom, it's virtual. Um, we are booking for the next class. So if you were interested or want to find out more information, the link is in the bio, click on the link. Schedule a call. It is free and have a conversation. See if it's right fit for you. But otherwise, good question. Good question there, yeah. dear, dear mom and dad. And so as all the questions are coming through, I will jot them down and we usually get to most of the questions. Um, so I'll do my best over here. Yep. Good one. Uh, critically thinking. I see you on that one. What's up, Pickle? We'll see you. Um, yeah, but denial, denial. I'm going to throw something, get these questions if you can, because I'm going to do a little rant real quick. So see if you can get those. And I appreciate you and love you for that. On it. Some of the fabulous with those big, beautiful lips. I saw you got the new lip gloss today. It's just a different, I was like, why do my lips look so juicy. full on here? I don't juicy. know. They usually don't look like this. I don't, know what, I don't know what's happening. It's all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> Looking good in those juicy lips. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, so here's a thought. I came out with this this morning. We were talking about denial this morning in one of the groups, and we were going through how denial works. Now, when I looked at the commonalities, just the averages, when it goes through your grieving cycle, guys generally get caught in anger because it's the only emotion we've ever still gotten respect for. And so guys will stay in anger for a long time because we do have forms of accomplishment and achievement. And respect and we are actually like there's some admiration that can come in if you're like the angry guy who stopped the bad guy or whatever there's there's room there posturing up and protecting somebody there's a place to stop injustice like anger has a place um so guys will get caught in anger because we can't be too sensitive you can't be too mopey you can't be too sad you can't be too any other judgment blame 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 with women Women generally get caught in denial. There's an absence of uh, acceptance of the truth. And so there's going to be a, a tougher part to it where, like, do you see the truth of it? Well, I'm not trying to accept that reality. And then it'll be deflected or distracted or blamed, shamed, and judged in another direction. So I see more commonly women don't get caught in anger like guys that get caught in denial. So then I started making a joke about denial. Denial is like the, the butt part for your, your grieving stages. And people like nice butts. I don't care if it's boys or girls. People seem to like nice butts because they throw them in all the time. <laughs> it's true. So they'll go like, you know, I would have done that, you know, but. You know, they were in my way and they messed up all my stuff, so I couldn't do that. Or I would have gone for my dream, but, you know, I had all these other things going on, so I wasn't going to do it. Or I could have said sorry, but they weren't really listening, so what's the point? And you're like, wait a second, what's all with all these butts here? There's so many butts. We start doing it for all of these things. So I'm like, well, let's take a look. Who likes nice butts on this cycle? Mm -hmm. Let's go through our grief cycle. Let's go through our enemies. Let's see who it is. Let's go with bargaining. Bargaining is going to be going into like the whole aspect of, well, like I wish this would happen. If only I could do this. I had one more chance with that person. If only I was there, I would have this. And we're going to create an alternate positive reality. But the problem is with bargaining is it's usually taken away because it's not real. Now, if we're dealing with an absence of reality, <laughs> denial loves that. Like we don't have to get into reality at all. Let's stay in make believe. Let's do that. Denial's friends with bargaining. Anger, 
Oh my gosh, we can bring some nice butts to anger. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have to do that, but she pissed me off so much, I feel like I had to do it that way. Oh man, denial loves not having accountability there. Yeah. Denial loves skipping reality that you're in control of your emotions and you get to choose how to handle stuff. Yeah, but she's blah, blah, blah. Your fault. Denial loves that shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice butts there. <laughs> what about what about depression? Sadness. Sadness gets everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, is denial okay with sadness? Of course it is. We can't accept the reality that we're the ones who do self-talk to put us into this deep, dark hole. And so denial is going to be like, let's not talk about that. Let's not even let's not even bring that up. Like, I'd like to be able to go through the sadness that I have in my heart, but it just makes it worse. And so let's go ahead and hang out with one of our other friends, which gets to our enemies. What about fear? Does denial work well with fear? Well, it goes into imagination. So, of course, we're going to deny reality. We're worried about all the things that could go wrong. I mm -hmm. would like to do the thing, but what if this happens? But what if this goes wrong? But what if they say no? But what if they laugh at me? But what? So I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. What about uh, excuses? <laughs> oh, set, this is like twin twinning. Like excuses is like like fraternal friends. Or fraternal, fraternal uh, twins. like twins with uh, <laughs> with denial. It's not the same as denial, but loves butts, loves yeah. big butts. Because excuses is all about making these half truths, so I don't have to be fully accountable. Which leaves me completely in denial of the absolute reality of my accountability in all situations. Please, let's justifications and excuses hang out with denial. Oh, they're homies. Homie. Homies. What about doubt? Does doubt and denial, do they work together? Absolutely. Ah, doubt has no problems with denial. In fact, they'll both attack your motivation together and rip that thing apart. Doubt has no problem going like, um, I'm not going to do that because, uh, insert but, you know, because it's not going to work and people don't think it's a good idea and nobody cares what I say anyways and I'm stupid. So I'm going to live in this reality that I don't have to have accountability for working in any of my stuff mm -hmm. because I don't want to have to deal with it because right. it hurts too much to stay in doubt. Absolutely. Of course. Homies. <clears throat> They're cool. Now, best friends. BFFs. <coughs> you know what the BFF with uh, denial is? Who? Distractions. Distractions mm -hmm. and denial. That's a good one. BFFs. These are the ones that are like, if there was peas in a pod, it's these two. Why? Because denial and distraction both do something very clever. They don't set off the alarms. This is why women can get stuck in denial, because it's the mask that we wear. It's the facade that we put up. It's the disguise to keep people away from getting too close to who we really are. And so we have to put up some sort of a makeup or a facade or, or a different mask so you don't know my reality. And I don't want to accept the truth of it either because I should be loved for who I am. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to change. So you should deal with that. Now, take it to the next level. Now let's add in distractions. Distraction starts off with simple stuff like watching TikTok all night or yep. getting into uh, notifications or too much Netflix or text battles or whatever. Fun yep. stuff, right? No problem. No problem at all. But distractions and denial also goes with, I'm going through so much pain I don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess with the pain that I have because somebody died or someone left me much, or yeah. I was hurt by somebody and I don't want to face this reality. Yeah. And so what I do instead is I need to feel good for just even a moment. I don't care what the cost is. I just need to feel either good or, as my guys will end up doing, I'd rather be numb. Now, you guys know which distraction do I need to use to feel numb because I don't want to feel the pain anymore. If you need some help, every country song and every rap song tells you what you're supposed to do. I'll give you a hint.
Any takers? Any takers on that one? What do we do to distract? So that way I don't have to feel the pain anymore of my reality. I'm drinking. I'm getting, <laughs> Destiny does cookies. Girls do food, boys do drinks. Now there are often, there's crossovers, depending sure. on the way that you grew up and the lifestyle that you were in for the habits that were put in there. But boys drink, girls eat. We're both just trying to feel good yep. for a minute. And both of these distractions have a cost. A cost that when I do this distraction, it feels good for a moment. Yep. But I feel terrible afterward. Hangovers or the emotional roller coaster that is emotional eating, these things that we do to try to feel good for just a moment. We feel horrible for later. And this is why distractions and denial is such a nasty bastard. It's because they don't set off the alarms. What am I talking about with set off mm -hmm. the alarms? What am I talking about? If you're in bargaining and you start doing, I wish I could talk to my grandmother one more time. I'd give, it, I'd give anything to do that. At some point, the reality is she's passed on. So I'll never get to do that. And so that dream gets ripped away from you in, in a, a harsh take off the band-aid reality twist what about anger does anger set off the alarms oh yeah the separator i'm gonna keep people away from my, me people <laughs> recognize angry people and it sets off the alarms what about depression you ever seen somebody super sad mm -hmm. you ever have an awareness like oh my gosh this person's like the storm cloud in the room they're yeah. not doing good yeah. sets off all the alarms what about people who are have high anxiety and they're scared all the time? Does fear set off the alarms that yeah. something's wrong? Yeah. Yes, it does. What about excuses and when people start challenging, are you really telling the truth here? Hey, back the fuck off. Leave my stuff alone. Don't yeah. mess with my shit. Like you start seeing really negative reactions come out of it. Yeah. Excuses sets off the alarm. What about doubt? Mm -hmm. When it starts shredding your motivation. Maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe yep. I'm not worthy of Didn't love. Work Maybe I'm not yep. good enough. Didn't work before. Why would it work now? Yeah. Does that set off negative alarms? Mm -hmm. What about something that makes you feel good? Does that set off negative alarms? Does it? Mm -hmm. You said something that feels good sets off my negative alarms. Eventually. Uh-uh. Does something that feels no. good set off something's wrong no no feels when great. something feels good we go ah, finally, especially in that moment finally i get a moment of feeling good through all of my pain my sadness my fear my shame my guilt out of all of these things that have happened i finally can find some way to feel good for just a moment now this is not to get biblical but just if you pay attention Throughout the Bible, the devil is always tempting with what you want the most, which is why it's funny. All these movies are like, I'm going to get your soul. Like he's in his red Spanx, going to get you with his pitchfork. No, he always shows up and goes, whatever you want the most, I'll give you as much as you want. You want drinks? You want money? You want, you want sex? You want whatever? I'll give you the abundance of it. And at first, it sounds awesome. That's what I want. That would feel great if I had all those things. Yes. Until you go in excess of anything. Mm -hmm. And then when you start going too deep, that's where having a drink or so, fine. <clears throat> Drinking until you're blacking out so you don't have to feel anything. Ooh, now we've gone too far. Taking a painkiller because you're in a little bit of pain, that's one thing. Being addicted to opioids or painkillers, not the same game at all. Mm -hmm. You know, having something to eat because you just wanted to have mm -hmm. a snack to feel okay, that's one thing. Relying on snacks or food at midnight or cakes or sugar because you need to feel good for just a moment now gives you body dysmorphia or some sort of shame in yourself. And when you feel worse after you did it, you eat more so you can feel good for a little bit and then hate cycle. yourself for doing it again. It's yeah. an endless cycle. Yeah. How much do you want? Yeah. Becomes a problem and it comes into this like pleasure cycle. It comes into a dopamine hit. It comes in through like it makes me feel good. 
and it doesn't set off the alarms the same way. Yeah. This is why denial is so tricky because it disguises itself as really nice butts. Mm -hmm. People <laughs> like nice butts. That's true. And so they're like, I'm going to invite the nice butts. But those nice butts don't set off the alarms. Everybody lets them in. Come on in with those nice butts. Come on in. Yeah. And then they start to shit all over everything. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So denial is a tricky one because it makes it so my accountability doesn't have to be there. But it's all your fault. But you didn't do this. But, 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 but. but. I yeah. am not accepting the truth. Because you, 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 blah, blah, blah. But I do have something that I want to celebrate. I see what you did. I saw and you did that nice uh, bases loaded 10 is in the house. What's up, bases loaded 10? And bases loaded 10 um, says, I'm 11 months sober, now dealing with everything I was trying to stay numb from. So congratulations on your 11 months sober. Yeah, way to go, warrior. Yes. And don't go back. I'm going to give you guys something, too. Bases loaded. Almost all of my guys that we have killed alcohol abuse from, every single one, they always have that moment they think I can try it. Now, maybe you've already gotten past that rock bottom where you're like, I think I can have one and be okay. The reality is every single one of my guys who have this have had to go through that and had to fight through sobriety, it's not worth even one drop, man. It's not even worth the drop. It's it, We're not there. Leave it alone. That's where these demons want to curse you. It will come out. It's best to keep working on your stuff without having to pull that stuff in and give it that extra shot to be able to give it a chance. It doesn't work. It's never worked. I don't have any examples of guys who can have one or two who have that, who've ever had an alcohol addiction. The demons are waiting. And if you open the door, they flood. And I just had one of my guys who... He was sober. He, he crushed out a 16-year addiction. And he's like, you know what? Let me just have one or two. I'll be fine. Oh, the demons came out. And it ended up being this huge mess. And he's like, oh, my gosh, you were right. I'm never doing it again. That was not good. You can't do even one drop. So if that demon in your head starts saying, you know what, man? Maybe you've got it. Maybe we figured it out. Maybe we can have a few now because we've got it under control. This is not true. Accept that reality. Don't get into the denial that this stuff is there. Get out of that stuff and just go, you know what? Let's be good. Yeah. Let's just be ourselves because who you are is valuable. Who you are has worth. And I enjoy my guys who uh, who have that fight and they have to fight against all of these demons all the time. <clears throat> proud of you, man. Super proud of you for the, the fight that you're doing. If you ever want backup, you know, come hang out because... That's one of the ones that we fight, man. Yeah. And what he means by come hang out is click the link at the top there <laughs> in the bio. Just have a conversation. Um, he runs multiple different um, men's groups. But if you want to have a conversation, it's an awesome support group to have. of Just men supporting men, having each other's backs any time of the day, honestly. So, awesome. Yeah. Good job, man. That's awesome. Good Congratulations. Job. Keep us posted. Anytime you see us live or, you know, comment on anything or send us a direct message, keep us posted on your progress. We're we're excited for you and congratulations again. Yeah. So, happy Thanksgiving, Katie Cosby. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. You. Thanksgiving. So we do have some questions. Can we get to them? Let's do it. All right. So what are your thoughts on the silent treatment? You, you should start off with some hey babes. Hey, hey babe. Hey, babe. <laughs> yeah, babe. What do you think about the silent <laughs> treatment? Uh, the silent treatment is interesting. I think that it's a subjective moment. It depends on the dynamic. I think people, we have our own needs. And a lot of times it's difficult for people to express our needs. And when people are going through whatever processing system they're doing, sometimes people just need some time to work it out. And if we feel like I need it to be a certain way, you may mistake somebody processing for ignoring you. And this is where that communication of like, no, I just need a little bit of time to, to work it out. Now, if the silent treatment is actually done in a way where they're like, I full blown ignore you with no understanding, no conversation. I'm just ghosting you. This is not a good, a good behavior. This is a negative behavior on their part. And it's going to be tough for you to be able to sort out, like, how do I communicate with somebody who's openly denying communication? 
Now you hope they're working through their stuff, but people will often use something as a weapon that hurts more than anything. Do you remember what that is, babe? Mm -mm. The weapon that people hurt people with the most is love. Because you care about them is why the silent treatment hurts. But if you're getting the silent treatment from me, you don't know me, so I don't care about that. But if you care about that person, it does a lot of harm when they ignore you because that person's important to you. They have value and it hurts. And so it depends on the dynamic with that. I don't know if they just need like some space to process or if they're trying to hurt you with love. It's yeah. an assessment you have to like kind of gauge and have a conversation about. But if they won't talk to you because of being mean, um, that's also a part of your value system to recognize that this is a relationship that works for you or not because it's not good. Yeah, I've seen people like have silent treatment for like a week or longer. Cool. Do you remember that one time when you told me to shut up, and I did? I do. He gave me silent, <laughs> silent treatment for the night. I told you to shut up. I was like, all right. Listen, I'll, we'll, I'll tell you that story first. Let's say, what's up, Ginger Ninja? What's up, Bronzo? Hey, Amy. Good to see you, bro. Yes. Good to see you again. Um, just want to say hey to some of you on there. Yes. Good to see you. Um, but. Oh, also, thank you guys, the likes and stuff and the shares. I guess that really helps out getting other people to help people. So if you guys like just try and hit me in the face as much as you can, <laughs> um, I guess that helps other people be able to get themselves like, so, into some good situations. Yeah, we don't really know much about TikTok, but they we hear, us. yeah, they say. So, our people tell us. So while we're, we're going to be sharing with you a very funny story about silent treatments, See if you guys can hit us up to another, ten, like get to 10,000 likes by just tapping my face. I really appreciate you guys. Hitting me in the face until we get to 10,000. Oh, All right. God. So while you guys are kill killing that mission, thank you, Amy. I see you. Thank you, Mr. Rigo. I see you. Thank you, C. Celine. I see you. Bree Bree. Cole Meets World. Welcome back on. Ginger Ninja, I yeah. see you guys hitting it. So now you guys are working. Time for us to work for you. I, uh, I remember we were in an argument. Obviously, we love each other. So there's going to be miscommunication. And there was a moment where she was getting highly defensive. I was getting aggressive. It wasn't going well. And I told her, shut up. And she got quiet and just went, all right, and just she was going to bed. I was like, huh. Now, I like closure. I need closure more than she does. She's like, fine, we'll talk about it tomorrow. For me, I'm like, hmm, no, we got to talk about that tonight. I want closure. We can figure it out. We can solve it. We can work it out. We can team up. Let's fucking do it. What are you doing? Don't go away. Like, I needed something. And so myself, I wake up in the middle of the night, and you know me already. I'm writing down, I'm processing the psychological attacks. I'm writing down this is the behavior. Here's what the cost is. Here's the thing. And I've got this whole presentation prepared because I'm like, oh, we're going to do this game. I'm going to show you what's going on. I'm with you, Amy. Is this part of a manipulation cycle? Are you doing this stuff? Oh, it's a Jesse. Hello. What's up, bro? So I'm thinking, here you go. You're going to wake up and we're going to get into it. I got you. I got you. And so we went up and I, I woke up. And I was like, I got all these things. And she's like, okay. And we, we sometimes when we're doing this, we put our headset on and we got our microphones because I want to hear us and we record it. I'm like, if there's something that's way off base, maybe so. So here I am, high and fucking mighty. I'm going to tell you my list of intelligent things to break this thing down. And at the end of all of this stuff, I'm like, this and this and this and this. And just know that this is the cost and this is the stuff. She was like, well... You told me to shut up, and I did. And I was like, <laughs> "Don't never listen to me again." <laughs> oh boy! Oh my gosh! I'm like, I did, and you listened. It's the first time you've ever listened when I said, "Be quiet," and boy, did I ask for that one. Yeah, you did. So I was like, I better be careful not to say shut up because sometimes they do. <laughs> and that made me more upset than uh, fighting it out. It's either a curse or a blessing, depending yeah. on how you look at it. So some of you, it's like <laughs> if they would just shut up, that would be good. In my case, I like working through it. And so when I said shut up, that didn't go very well. I was like, lesson learned on that one. You know, don't say shut up. <laughs> don't do that because yeah. people sometimes will listen. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty tough. So there's 
funny lessons, just funny relationship lessons for us to, you know, break in through some of that that old stuff. So that silent yeah. treatment, it can also be kind of a kind of an issue, you know. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> Don't say shut up. They right. might listen. <laughs> listen learned is right. Damn. Um, advice for a divorced couple trying to make things work. Divorce couple, I don't know if you guys, whoever mentioned this is still on. If, if you could, what do you mean by make it work? Like for the children or do you mean like you back two are together. trying to get back together? Like what does make it work mean for your definition? Um, that would be helpful. See, so experience that too where my partner did the same thing and it was weird as, yeah, Bronzo, I want to hear what she said. Bronzo, how do I say it? Is it Bronzone or Bronzon? I saw we, we messaged each other because we're following you back, but I don't remember what it is. Phil. Here you go, Phil. You see Phil jump on there? Actually, of I course. See, see him hitting those lights. lights. I see Phil's coming on the strong. He's going to make okay. sure we get to 20,000 likes. Just call me Bronze. 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 You, got you got it. it. So whoever asked the question, advice for a divorce couple trying to make things work, we just need a little bit more clarification. Oh, getting back together after my ex-wife had been in a relationship with someone for two years. So you're trying to get back together. Um. Is there, like, whatever the reason was for her to leave, did she leave for this other person? Or did you guys split and then she went with somebody else and then that fell apart and now she's like, the grass isn't really greener? You know, like, how, give us a little more context. And obviously, as people are going to say, like, the initial, just this a much, much information is like, this is red flag central for betrayal, red flag central for trust not going to be there. Seems like there's going to be a whole lot of issues as far as uh, atonement or being able to figure out. Okay, so they so. split, then she met him and fell, and apart, fell apart with him. With him. So what would be your benefit? And get, Do you guys have kids together and that's why you want to try and make it work for kids? Or did she just go out, get to have her fun, and now she wants to come home to you because you're safe and secure and she just needs to sow some wild oats? Like, what is that? Like, what's happening? Or did you guys, we weren't compatible before, so she had to go out and be with someone else, but now we're compatible? Mm -hmm. Like, what's different? What has changed? Yeah. Uh, it seems like there's uh, some pretty heavy things we need to get in there. Hood Rise Bodhi says, what was the reason for the split? Great question. Good question. Mm -hmm. So we will wait for you, Mr. Hood Regal, Rides 87. Bodhi. Let's see if we can do two questions at once. I do. We, got, we need more context. Mr. Regal, we need more context. Uh, that way we can be more effective at helping you. Phil knows. <laughs> Let's see. He's Kids, quick. Mary, you're, yeah, you're doing a great job, Mr. Regal. Kids, we were married for 10 years. I had issues with PTSD and mood swings, but I've worked on since. Um, are you ex-military at all, Mr. Regal? Because if so, I work with uh, I work with another company that works with military people. They don't call it PTSD because it's not a disorder. It's very curable. I've cured it. I know other people that have cured it, and i got a company I work with. Um, that those guys that work at the 22 zero, they work with military to, they smash PTSD out the window. Um, they do it in a very different style than me. I work more with, uh, cognitive behavioral therapies. Um, what they do is more neuro linguistic reprogramming. And so it's very different style, but it's super effective in which case it's, uh, it's very cool to be able to see how that works. Um, if you ever want, if you were struggling with that stuff at all, I've got a lot of guys we've crushed it for. It's not a disorder; it is beatable. We just have to break a couple of the parts that trigger us into those responses. So, this is stuff. If you've already worked through those things, that's awesome. Good on you. We know that battle; it's a tough fight. So, well done. And uh, if you've gotten through that stuff, is that the reason she left? Because you were working through things. Now, this is an important question. Did she leave because you were having issues? This is, a, this is an interesting one. Do I do one-on-one -on -one work? I do. I do one-on-one -on -one work. I, do, I mostly do groups because of uh, how many people want my time, but I also have been known to do one-on-one -on -one work. I did this weekend with, uh, with some people. I did some one-on-one -on -one work this weekend. So, yes, I do make time for certain clients to do one-on-one -on -one work. So, yes. And it's effective it's very it's very effective it's anyone can vote effect. like yeah it's i it's always interesting describing what it is that you do because he's so good at it so Earth. even when i'm like he's really good at it 
like it is such an understatement because until you have had a conversation with this man, you will not get it. Like people can tell you because it sounds like, oh, we're selling like until you have the conversation, this guy is a master at what he does. And anyone that is in his program, and there's several, and there's quite there's a few of them on there. tonight, um, can vouch for that. Hands down, very quick. Um, it's at the link. Let me, or at the, at the link. It's in the bio at the top. Just click the link, and then you can book a call. Let me see if I can attach the link to your name, okay? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, so it's in our, yeah, like you said, it's in our bio or at the warriorswaymindset.com. Um, that's, uh, it goes right to the site where you can just book a call. Um, you'll either catch uh, myself or uh, my health, my health scout, my health teacher, my health seeker. Uh, that's Matthew. He takes a lot of our calls because he's worked through a lot of some pretty, some powerful things. And so he'll be talking with one of us or both of us. So book the call to see if what, what we do is what you need. Um, the PTSD thing, if you tried meditation and you said trying to control the emotions, it's really difficult to do without certain tools. And we have to break some of the fears or the associations that are there. It's a lot of work, actually, to break some of those down because we have to get to the cores and detach the core memory. Um, it's some powerful work that we do on that. So it is very beatable, though. Like, we beat, there's thousands. Like, I know even with 22 zero, they're like over 5,000 people that they've just removed it, their PTSD for them. Yeah. So it's very beatable. We have a lady at our church, actually, that Rick introduced to the program. And we saw her, when was it, two weeks ago? Not even. She looks like week. a different person. I mean, I mean, just her spirit, like her physical presence looks like a building literally was lifted off of her. Yeah. Completely different. So, yeah. So much better. Um. Base is loaded. We are in central time zone. We actually are here in the wonderful state of Illinois. Um, but here's what I will say base is loaded too. What? So awesome. Um, if you're looking to work with Rick on one-on-one, -on -one, -on -one, when you book the call in the comments, just notate that just so we know so he can jump on that call. Yeah. Uh, but just make sure I know where you came from on it. And I won't know you because your name's not Bases Loaded 10. So like, make sure you have that stuff. Let's see. Uh, the resource again, um, Coal Meets World. I work with a, a company, um, you know, and their their company is called 220. The reason why is because um, for veterans and first responders and people who fall in this area, there's 22 suicides a day and they need to get that number down to zero. Keith. Good, perfect. So I know what to look for. Thanks, Keith. Um, but they, they like, we gotta get 22 suicides a day down to zero. We're the last line of defense, and he just takes care of uh, veterans. And this also goes for first responders too, like because um, he started it off because of 9/11. So firefighters, uh, uh, EMTs, um, police officers, people who go in hard and they see just just terrible things. It causes a lot of trauma. And he really started it off with helping them out with that. So that was a big part of it. So, um, yeah, definitely the PTSD part is very beatable. And we've beaten it multiple times. And uh, that company, that's what they specialize in. We do it in different ways, though. So I've done it my way. And between the two of them, um, I think it's better together because their way is initially faster. But my way makes it stick forever. And this is why they work together. There's not one's better. It's like, um, you know, I went on a diet and that's happening, but to keep results, I got to keep doing it. Yeah. Now it's got to become a lifestyle, not a diet. You know, it's one of those things. We'll start with the diet yeah. and then we'll create a lifestyle. You know, it's one of those things where it works better. Yeah. So awesome stuff. That's really, it's really very helpful. <clears throat> um, Hood Rides, Bodie, what, are you in Illinois? Where are you from? Yeah. You, are you in the, are you in our park? And thank you, Amy. Yeah, your beard is magnificent. I know. Oh, thank you. I think that's a good time for any of my beard barians out there to get a little beard brush out there. <laughs> Just go give yourself a little beard. Love. Listen, anyone that has a beard, if you have a beard, a luxurious oh. beard out there, um, get yourself a beard straightener. It's life changing. That it's very helpful. There's a lot. We do. We've done some beard beard videos. St. Louis, like six hours away. Yeah, from Granite City. Right on, right on. <clears throat> oh, yeah. All right, do you want to keep with the questions? What are yeah. you doing? Let's do yeah? the questions. Okay. Listen, let me, enjoy, <laughs> let me enjoy my beard brushes, baby. Everybody, every guy out there who has a beard understands 
the benefit. I don't care if it's short beard either. My short beard guys, you guys already know. If you got an itch and you use the stubble, oh, nothing is more effective. It's <laughs> the best wire brush you got is on your face. But any of my beard guys, big long beard, they already know when you brush your beard, it's like, it's like getting like a head massage. Did we ever finish Mr. Regal's question? Let's see what he had. Um, she felt like she was always on eggshells around me. Uh, it looks like I missed that last I can one. get it. You got it? Let's see. I was overly critical of everything. Okay. So if you're like, I'm on eggshells and overly critical, have you removed a bunch of those pieces? Because if you don't have those things and you really are taking, like, my accountability was I'm the reason she left and I got rid of those demons, um, then it seems like you guys may be able to fresh start as long as you can have whatever forgiveness for, like, both of you being gone. Like, she is invested in another person and, you know, you went on a personal development journey. If you feel like you're both at the same level now and it's going to work. Um, my real answer, like the real honest answer is I'd have to know you guys better to see if you guys can really work through that stuff. Um, that's, there's a lot of, lot of history. It's not just, Hey, we're a new thing. There's a lot of history to see if there, the pieces are really healed or if you're just trying to make a square fit in a circle, like then it's going to be like, yeah, you're forcing it. I, you're going to have to shave those edges off, you know, if you really want to make it work. But I don't know if that's really that authentic. So I'd have to know you guys more truthfully, only because of how much history there is. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be a book of call moment. It would be cool. Like, let's talk and let's see. And if, if you yeah. both want to be there, I don't mind that. I've done, uh, we've had couples conversations with people to see like, if this is what you guys want, um, we'll do a free call for you and see yeah. what we can do. Sometimes the alpha side perspective, if it can give you, put you on the right path mm -hmm. and give you just a little bit of information, you know, someone that's non-biased, because that's truly what's so helpful, um, definitely book the call. Also, just to see, like, here's the spot you guys got. If you guys are going to make it work, it's this thing right here you guys yeah. have to get rid of. That makes us so you at least know where to start. Yeah. And I usually catch those ones pretty quick. So Gus Mandrano says, uh, my girlfriend and I fight all the time. We have past baggage with each other. Never cheated. No trust. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you. So this is, uh, is it Guns? Guns Medrado. Um Or Gus. 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 All right. Gus, if you guys don't have trust, what do you guys have? Like, what do you guys, what do you guys, what do you build your relationship on if it's not trust? If you guys don't have trust, like, what do you guys? What do you guys got? I'm just curious. Uh, Robert Cox, appreciate you, man. Really do. Thank you. R really appreciate you. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being a fan. Um, while we wait for Gus. Oh, um, oh, I see Rob's got a question. Too. Yeah. How can childhood trauma affect relationship? In every way yep. possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, in almost every way possible. Like, especially in marriage. Um. When people get married, a lot of times they subconsciously become one of their parents. And it'll be the one they identify with the most, so it's not gender specific. You know, you may identify with your mom more and become more like her, or you could identify more with dad. And, uh, you end up marrying the person that you don't identify with because that's what love is. Mm -hmm. It's the association for love. So can childhood trauma affect a relationship? And every single yeah. part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. If you haven't, um, Robert, I would encourage you to take uh, an Enneagram test and um, it'll tell you a little bit about your personality. It's part of one like very small piece within Rick's program, but um, take the test and see what number it gives you. Yeah. What was the Enea app or something? Yeah, that... it'll, I'll put it in the chat, but take this um, quiz. It's a free app that you can download and take the quiz and then... Um, It'll give you some insight about um, your number and kind of what, why you do the things you do, kind of. So it'll, have, it'll at least give it'll, us, it'll give us a baseline of what, it's kind what, of a how hint. Do you, how do you process? But yeah, just, there's a lot more to it than what's on the app. But it's just a, just one tool in the box. So yeah. we'll work. There's something to work with, though. Yeah. All right. So we love each other, but that has been a major thorn. She interrogates, not question. Yeah. So this is where I I, I play a little bit more investigator here if we love each other what do we love about each other if i don't trust you 
Like, I really do want to know. Like, I, like, like, what is the piece that, like, this is what I love about her, but I don't trust her. And this is what I love about him, but I don't trust him. Is it communication? Is it respect? Is it honor? Is it loyalty? What is the thing that I, I love about this person, but I don't trust anything that they say at all? I don't trust their respect, and I don't trust their loyalty. I think they're messing around on me, and I don't think they're honoring me the right way, and I don't think they're even being honest, and I blah, blah, blah. Without trust, what do you love? It might be the denial, because I love that butt, right? Could be. Like those, it's like, it's like, listen, man, we don't really have a lot going on here, but you should see these new leggings that she got. You're like, dang. And I'm like, fair enough, bro. I get it. Let's see what you're talking about. No, if you can't trust them, though. Oh, no. Yeah, trust is out the window. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just on butts only. <laughs> I'm like, I get it, Gus. I get it. <laughs> Been together for three years. Could be in denial. So there's a reality check for you guys. There's One thing I would do with you both, Gus, is I would do a, valid, a, va a value assessment. What are your values? What are your boundaries? What are her boundaries? What do you guys need? Like, I would go like, what do you value? Where are, what, are, what is it? Because if trust is not one of the basic needs in a relationship, what are we basing it on? Service, sacrifice, love languages, expectations, or is it just a bunch of pain and nobody seems to get it? Because even if you try to do it, I question and doubt everything that you're doing. Comfortable in the pain? Yeah. <laughs> Could be yeah. that too. There's, a, but the denial is the part of we're not looking at this with objective eyes. We're creating rose-colored glasses to make it so that the things that we know are terrible are okay. Because, and the because is the fun part. What's your reason it's okay? I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, bro, been together three years. Is that butt, man? I'm telling you. I'm like, listen, if, if you take the butt out of the equation, what are you guys working with? And you're like, well, can we bring the butt back? I'm like, no, get that out of there. What do we got now? You're like, I don't think that we're doing that good. I'm like, I think you know the answer, but you may just need some validation as far as what works for you. So that's a different thing, but... I'd be interested to see. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see more information from you two to see like which part of it is not being accepted as a reality. If we're in this without trust, what do you have? Because she is beautiful. She does have a great heart, but you're right. Let's take the beautiful out of the equation, and she has a great heart that doesn't trust you, and <laughs> or you don't trust her. I think she's a major thorn. What yeah. is great about it if they don't trust you? Like, what's great if everything that you say, I don't believe it? What's great if they are doing something or you're doing something and we have to doubt or interrogate or question everything? Yeah. And I'm curious. Besides, she's beautiful. We got to get that out of there. But I also wonder, too, just to be clear, is it that you guys don't trust each other because you said that she interrogates you? Or she just doesn't trust you, but you do trust her. Where's the trust? I think you said they both have baggage. We both have past baggage with each other. Okay. But it wasn't cheating. She doesn't trust me. I guess it's hard to go down that breakup road, I guess. Did you do something to violate her trust? Or does she have trust issues from past dynamics? That's different. <clears throat> right on. Robert Cox, looking forward to see what you got, man. Almost all of us. We, we do get into a lot of, like, why do we do what we do conversations. Enneagrams help us start off, that's for sure. Gus, Phil has a question for you, too. Do either of you have Snapchat? <laughs> <laughs> we did a whole thing on that. It's funny. Yeah, if you're over, yeah, no. Never mind. Yeah, no, no judgment. Do you have Snapchat? No. I have a daughter's Snapchat. That's what I have. Mm -hmm. So I can see if she's downloading Snapchat. Naughty. All right, so looking forward to it. <clears throat> yeah. Is it uh, Leanne? Sometimes all the words are put together. So Gus says, I was speaking to exes <clears throat> as, mm -mm, as friends, and she did not like it. I don't. She does for 
kid, she says, hmm? What? You were speaking to your exes as friends, and she did not like it. Maybe let's start there. Yeah. Okay, we got that. So you were talking to exes as friends. She didn't like that stuff. She does for the kids, she says. She has Snapchat for Oh, the for kids. the kids. Of course. Yeah, so, um, right. Of course. Of course. I've got, yeah, so I actually have Snapchat, but it's just for the kids. I have Cheater Chat. But it's only for the kids. No, we don't play that game. Listen, it's just so I can have a streak with the girls. Not the, listen, our girls. I don't want to talk about the other girls. That doesn't work for me. It doesn't <laughs> work. I'm unfamiliar um, with Snapchat. It uh yeah, there's uh the behavior of the entire app, we've been pretty against it. Yeah. Uh, we took all our girls off of it because they started having um yeah. a lot of I would negative negative associations um there's a lot of things that start happening when there's accountability is completely removed uh people start doing I, stuff the uh, morality starts to go out the window i would say if you were a parent um because as an adult you guys can choose to do whatever you want but as a parent if your kids are on snapchat i would investigate what is actually happening on snapchat <laughs> yeah, it's designed to do a it, few things. One of them is remove accountability from being able to have to say, I actually did a thing. Because they have a belief system that it just disappears. It doesn't just disappear, by the way. People keep getting hacked, so it doesn't just disappear. Um, another thing to it, too, is it eliminates sentimentality. It makes it so nothing lasts. You don't have an attachment to anything. It's going to come and go. Whatever. There's no photo album. There's no... Yeah, I'm going to save everything that you see is just it's here. It's gone. Nothing matters. Nice, cool, blah, move forward. It starts to remove any type of nostalgia that we're going to have yeah. for things because everything is designed to just disappear anyways. Well, what kind of like relationships do you have if everything that you're used to using is meant to just go away and who cares and it's replaceable yeah. and whatever. There's more. Like there's some like endless abundance mentality. Yeah. It ends up also being not good for commitment. Not yeah. Good for uh, just being Abs nostalgic. Just in general. Yeah. yeah. So Gus, going back to your part because she has Snapchat. I think we covered that for the kids. For the kids. You say you were speaking to exes as friends, and she did not like it. Mm -hmm. So. The kids don't need Snapchat, just so you know. This is not a requirement. In fact, it's probably really bad because we have three girls who have but, all fallen into Snapchat traps. Yeah, we even have one good. that says she can only get her work schedule on Snapchat. I go, no, you can't. That's but I can call her and get your schedule. Yeah. <laughs> You're, we're, we're ancient dinosaurs. We use regular yeah. phones. Early on, they were just friends. Mm -hmm. which, which, I get it. But, I mean, it's one of those things, too. It, early on is a different thing too. This is also a different thing. Are you saying that like when you guys first were talking and first getting to know each other and you still had associations with other people, that's being held against you three years later? And are any of the kids yours? That's also important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a different thing. Are any of the kids yours, Gus? <laughs> right, Aussie. the work schedule, that's what I He's, said. You see it, Lily. No, they're not his. No kids. All right, so let's just let's just go ahead and do a small value assessment here. You're taking on her children as a step parent, which is already monumental to do in the first place. As a, as a step parent, I'm taking on three children with maximum risk for loss, where I give resources, time, energy, and love that can be taken away at one of her emotional moments she can just have one day and it's all gone that is not first of all that's not how i react i didn't say that's how you react i said you only have to have it once <laughs> what of her emotional outburst <laughs> all you have to do is have one and i lose everything and it's actually reality whether hey don't go into denial on me right now do you believe <laughs> but it you, would all be your fault yeah it's all your fault <laughs> do you believe if you were to say hey we're done yeah. That I get to take any of the girls. No. Okay, so in one decision, I lose yeah. everything, which means you have put yourself in a position to risk and lose everything with only a cost to you where you've given money, time, 
resources, skills. You've given your most valued versions of yourself for another person's children just to say, I don't trust you because two and a half years ago, you talked to people you used to know. Unless you're still talking to them. But he says not talking to them. No cheating. Doesn't talk to them anymore. Like, well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And then now you're always wrong and she plays the victim. Let me ask you real talk, Gus. Real talk. What is the value you get from this relationship? He said, play the victim. Do not talk to them. No, but for real. Uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and remove what she's trying to judge you and shame you for. Because that's obviously irrelevant. Because it's like saying I'm going to judge you for having kids with another person. Like, the past has happened. And I'm not doing the behavior anymore to make new problems. So we don't have to blame, shame, and judge. And if we are, we're deflecting for some reason. But what is it you get from this relationship? What is your benefit? If you've got to go through this pain, what is the price that you get for the pain? What is it? I'm thinking about it. I don't know. What do you get? Like, this would be, write it down. Like, write down this. I have to go through all of these sacrifices. I have to change who I am. I can't talk to certain people. I have to do things your way, and I'm never going to be good enough. I'm not doing well. You don't trust me. You're going to tell me how I'm the I'm bad guy here. You're going to play a victim on me for being the guy who steps up to take care of your kids and you and is there for all of your fucking drama. And what am I doing it for again? I don't think so, Tim. What, what, what are you getting? What are you getting? Like, what do you, what do, uh, what do you get from the relationship? Because it's got to be something amazing to go through all of this stuff where you have to change who you are, change who you talk to, give everything for somebody else's children, and then not be good or trusted or listened to at all or respected. It's got to be amazing what you get, dude. Nothing. He doesn't get anything. Okay. Maybe we should do a value assessment of this dynamic to see, like, if you're being only used, abused, and shamed, and put down, and you get nothing for it, this may not be the healthiest relationship for you. Now, I'm not telling you go break up, but I am saying do a value assessment here. What do you have? And if you have nothing, what are you going to continue giving all of your resources for? The most precious being time. What are you going to be giving that up for if you're receiving nothing? It's a real conversation you have to have with yourself. So that's something for you to think about, man. And I honor you as a warrior to go through that conversation in your head because it's mean. If you need backup and try to work it out because it's a, it's a skill or a tool you've never done before, give me a call. We're on a break right now. Bad fight the other day. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. So here's the thing. We think things happen to us. Sometimes they happen for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe just stay on that break. Just stay on that break for a very long time. In fact, take your fucking power back by staying on that break for longer. And don't fall for any of the shit that she tries to manipulate you back with. Because if you do a real value assessment and you realize all I am is put down, told I'm the bad guy, I'm not a good person, and I am the one who takes care of all of her shit. Maybe, maybe keep that break going for a while and do a little bit of a value assessment for yourself of what are you looking for? What are your values? What are you worth? What are your boundaries? What are your non-negotiables? Who are you? Yeah, keep it through January. They don't have to buy any Christmas gifts. <laughs> Saving money too. Genius. You're I'm completely so kidding. Smart. My advice is always on point. <laughs> Take those gifts back. Get that oh. money. You're funny, babe. I know. And when you say it, I'm like, oh, that didn't sound very good. <laughs> that was your uh, joke. I know. I didn't even like my own joke. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But Gus, book a call too. If you want to talk through some things too. Um, again, you guys just saw very quickly. He was identifying things. Um, Jared saying, exactly my situation with slight modifications. Find the switch to turn off your feelings for a while. Well, I would say it a little different, Jared, because this gets a little dangerous, too, because you never actually deal with and it can get stuck. 
I would say it's slightly different. Instead of turn off, go through. Mm. Go through all the feelings. Feel all the feels. Write them out. There's nothing wrong with you having feelings, contrary to society right now. There's nothing wrong with us men feeling our feelings. I would also suggest get yourself an outlet. Yeah. I don't get wrong with us men feeling our feelings. I would also suggest get yourself an outlet. Yeah. I don't care. I would also suggest get yourself an outlet. Yeah. I don't care. I got nothing here. We're back. Are no. we back? No. Yeah, we're, we're back. back. We're back. Sorry, guys. I was going to make a joke because the internet froze and we'd be like, bad. Yeah, I know. Bad, bad donkey. Um, okay, so Jared, we're back. Did all of that. Turning it off has been better for a few weeks. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good start. Like I said, don't get too far into the denial part. Now, also, there's Jared, you and I, we could talk, bro. I think we would have a good conversation. Turning it off only goes so far because having that type of armor up, it also can become our prison at the same time because we start blocking out the emotions. It's a good place to start, especially if you're working through in your fighting style. Some of us are mind type, some of us are body type, some of us are heart type. You got to fight your style. For my mind guys, we compartmentalize. Let's break it all up. Let's work on this one systematically, no problem at all. If you're able to do that, this is a very useful tool for you to go, I'm going to shut down the emotions on these things and compartmentalize each problem. Got it. Mm -hmm. No problem. If you're on the hard side, it's a little trickier to do that. We have to separate some of the emotions that are connected to each one of the problems. And so I got to figure out like which warrior type you are so we can know which way we fight your fight rather than try and do it the way you watch a YouTube video or somebody else say, because it may not be authentically your fighting style. Yeah. And so that's where it's a little bit different, but it's a slippery slope, bro. I did the no emotions thing for years. It, it seems good because it's no different than alcohol. It seems good for a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. He said Paladin, apparently. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my, my dude. That's my, that's my guy. I was going to say, how do, wait a minute, that seems familiar. No. You must have, Jared, Jared actually, I think, did you talk to Matthew already? I, I don't know if this is a, we've had a few Jareds talk to Matthew. And he may have talked about that, where we have an entire group of paladins. So. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, you spoke, spoke with that. that. Oh, awesome. right on. Jared, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to talk to you, but I'm glad that I'm glad to see you on here. Right yeah. on. Yeah. What's up? What's up, um, Richard? Bad, bad donkey. So he says, wife doesn't want to put in any effort to work. In, she doesn't want to put any work into our marriage. She just complains, loveless and no affection. And then he says, how do I mo motivate my wife to put in work into our marriage? You don't. You don't. That's a choice she has to make. Here's an interesting thing. We were talking about this tonight, especially for currency and dynamics. Um, I think that it's interesting when you watch who we were when we were trying to get someone to fall in love with us. Like, I find this fat. I love first dates. I love watching people on their things. I love watching them because people are putting their best versions of them forward, or at least their impression of what they believe the best versions of them is. And so when somebody is trying to go like, I'm going to give you what I believe you want, whether it be empathy, attention, sex, money, chivalry, like, I don't know what it is, but people go above and beyond when you're first starting off. And then we started noticing stages that that starts to change. The biggest milestone where the rules change is moving in together. As soon as people move in together, it seems like the dynamic starts to change pretty radically. The time that you guys spend together now becomes more, mm -hmm. which means the value of it becomes less. You're encroaching on what I believe the systems should be. And so instead of us going like, hey, I like it this way, it's like you're doing it wrong because it's not my way. And things start to change when you move in together. All of the chivalry start to go down. All of the extra favors that she used to do start to go away. Take it to the next level, marriage. Now we add in a whole new dynamic. As soon as we add in marriage, now we subconsciously start doing what we believe marriage is, which is what our parents showed us. And that turns into a whole nuts. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and throw kids on there and change the rules again. Well, now I have a whole new set of priorities and you got bumped down. So now all of the things that I used to do 
to be able to make you fall in love with me, whether it be the chivalry or the sexual favors or the energy or the empathy or the time or the prioritization, whatever it was that made you choose me, I don't do any of that anymore. And why are we having problems again? Weird. So crazy. Is it though? You became a low priority. I stopped doing anything that you loved that I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm not putting any effort towards what made us choose each other. And we're wondering why we're struggling. The only thing that can change that is the willingness to redate each other again. And if she has no willingness to date you again, you can't help her do anything. You can't make her want to date you again. No different than she can make you want to date her again. And there may be an assessment between you two where you're like, you know what? Date you. I know you. And I don't want a second date with you. And you're like, damn. This changes the dynamic of how much of your most precious resource, which is time, that you put into somebody who's not even going to put you as a priority to want a second date. Life is weird right now, you guys. We're in a very interesting time where like people aren't trying to work it through. They're thinking I can just give up and that's fine. You're just going to deal with. Ladies, I want to break one of your curses. One of the curses we're going to kill is the lie that's been fed to you that you think you should be loved just for who you are. Because you're also in a world where you want to be measured and valued for what you contribute. Well, which is it? Do you want to be loved for who you are? Or do you want to go appreciate me for all the things that I do? You got you to gotta pick one. You don't get both. You can't say like, hey, I want you to pay me hourly, but I'm not going to go to work. You should just pay me anyway. So you're like, well, it's hourly. Like, well, pay me for being me. You're like, but it's hourly. So do you want to be paid hourly or do you want me just to pay you for who you are? But you can't be paid hourly and just get money for who you are. That's not how it works. But somehow we play that game of love. Ladies, pick one. Because one of them changes the dynamic completely. You want to be valued based on what you bring to the table? No problem. Guys are totally cool with it. Let's do a value assessment and we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Sounds awesome. but. If you're like, love me for who I am, I'm not going to change anything. Well, you don't get to call the shots because you are not contributing your love for who you are, princess. And that's fine, too. We don't mind, but you don't get to drive the car and just get everything that you want for no reason. Like, pick one. And I don't have any guys, just so you know, who are against equality. Not one. They're all like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Everything's Dutch. <laughs> Sounds good. Equal everything? Fantastic. Equal court system? Yes, please. You want equality? Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's is, do it. Yeah. No guys are against it. Mm -hmm. So just something to consider. You, you may not want to keep standing on this pedestal of love me for who I am so I don't have to work on my stuff, so I don't have to grow. I don't have to get better. I don't have to work on my own things. Like, don't do that because mm -hmm. it's a curse that stops you from growing and it keeps you in what thing, baby? Mm -hmm. What thing does it keep you in? Sorry, I was reading the questions. That's my girl. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> it keeps you in denial. It keeps you in the thing where it's everybody else needs to change. Everyone else's fault. You need to do this for me. You have to do it. It's not me because I should be loved for who I am and you need to change. It's you, 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 you. And if you're not doing good enough, I'm going to go take all of these issues I got from the guy before, all of these issues I got from you and take all of these issues to a new person, take on all of their new issues and it's going to be better. Maybe not. So I want to get that curse out of there, ladies. Listen. You got to work on you. He's got to work on him. Do not get caught up in the love me for who I am. We both have work to do. The question Angry Zelda says, she said, do you guys work with women? Yes. 
Yes, we do. This curse had to be broken. And it's deep. Mm -hmm. It's deep, ladies. It's there since you were four years old, deep. It's deep. That thing has been in there where you think you don't have to work on you. He needs to do it for you. We do not train damsels at the warrior way. We train warriors. And we teach ladies to go, you know what? It's not them. <laughs> it's me. And I have to get rid of this part that everyone needs to change for my princess self. And it's time for me to pick up my own sword and shield and kick some ass. Yeah. That's true. Bronzo, we yeah. actually have a conversation with that right at the beginning. It's actually pretty fun to figure out your warrior type. We, we do some pretty fun work with that. So Bad Bad Donkey says, so I wait for her to fight it on her own. Well, you have a conversation about values for you two to see if you guys are really going to do the work. The only thing that really matters, Bad Bad Donkey, the only thing that matters is one word. Willingness. Do you want to make it better? <clears throat> If they don't want to make it better, your choices become simple. And this is a scary thought, but it's a real thought. And this is the reality to all of it. Kick your denial out. Every single choice is simple. That can't be right. I didn't say it was easy. That can't be right. I know I didn't say it was easy. No, no, easy is not the same as simple at all. Every choice is simple. Once you get down to what do I have, am I going to stay or am I going to go? Every choice is simple. You're like, yeah, but we got bank accounts and we got years together and we got kids and we got this stuff. I'm like, I'm like, sure, sure. I can go through the list, hundred things even, and at the end of it, it's gonna be like, cool. So, are you gonna stay or are you gonna go? Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah, but what about? Oh, we're gonna add more. Okay, this emotion and this thing and my mistakes here and this thing and I have shame and she's not forgiving me and I'm guilty for and blah blah blah. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. Are you going to stay or are you going to go? Pick one because they are different paths and you got to do different work. <laughs> one is together, one is not, but you got to pick which path you're going to do. Which one are you doing? Because they're they're different work. One is just you with you, one is you with her. Different work. Which one are you doing? Mhm. Mm the choices, the choices don't care what you pick. No, they're all around you. Yes, they are. He stole that thing. He's funny. He's using my stuff. He's using my stuff. I don't know why I like that stuff. Our much, stuff. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so we have to answer Bronzo's question. Let's do it. How does one gain trust after it's gone? I hope that was your question. I think it was. <laughs> oh man, that's all right. So that's a that's a deep one. Depending on what trust was, let me. There's all right. There's a simple answer, and then there's a deep answer. What's up, Latin man of steel? I see you, bro. There's a simple answer, and then there's a deep answer. Simple answer is is that you decide you're going to trust somebody. The simple answer is is that it's a decision that you make. I choose to trust you. People say bullshit stuff like trust is earned and all this stuff. Well, earned by what? How, many, how much currency do I need? How many earns do I need? Is it 10 points, 20 points of what? I don't even know what we're earning anymore. What am I supposed to do to have like enough points to have trust? What's the points for respect? What's the points <clears throat> for love? They're subjective ass terms. We all have a different system that's a belief that we just make up how much I trust, I don't. I like them, I don't. I love them, I don't. You know, I respect, I don't. You know, we just make up the rules for it. In which case, when it comes to trusting somebody, the simplicity is, is do you do it or not? That's the simple one. You you want, can I trust you? Can I not trust you? And you choose. What's the risk? Well, they may hurt my trust. They may betray me. They may break my heart. They may whatever. Have you ever been through that stuff before? Yeah. So you make it again. So not unbeatable. It's something that you've already gone through. So you'll survive. So is this person worth trusting and worth going through that again if it ever goes wrong? Or are they not worth it? Now, deeper answer is if we go through and we heal whatever the transgression was. Now, the deeper answer gets into if it was a betrayal, if there was a, a loyalty break, if there was Whatever the distrust thing is there for, the atonement, the new agreements, the working through the new vows, um, you know, having new consequences that we both agree, like this is how our dynamic will run, 
it gets a little deeper on that aspect. But see, what if you're the one who caused mistrust? There's a degree of atonement that you've got to do. You've got to go through the stages for that. Um, Bronzo, we actually have a video. It looks just like this. It shows me holding the book. I actually go step by step on what you need to do. And I also go step by step on what not to do and what to watch out for what they do. It's about 10 minutes of a video on there. Um, but like I go step by step. And so like check it out. It looks just like this. It was one of the videos that we clipped off of this. Um, but like it's it goes, I literally break the book out and I go, these are your steps. That's how you make it happen. And uh, I don't want to do like the 10 minutes right now, but it does exist. We made it. So it's pretty it's pretty useful for you to, to check it out. And um, message me too, because we follow you back. Just send me a DM, man. When you like go through it or wherever you're at, just DM me and we'll talk. Yeah. If you aren't physically attracted to someone, but they share your values, do you keep trying? It's an interesting question, mm -hmm. Richard. If you aren't physically attracted to somebody, but they share your values, do you keep trying? Um, I, I really think that this is a this is a you only answer because mm -hmm. if if you got somebody who's like they may not be like the like I guess whatever your interpretation of a beautiful person is or whatever. Thank you, appreciate you. If if they're just not your impression of what you think someone should be, but inside they are one of the most amazing people you know. Listen, the outside stuff can you can do stuff. You can work out, do some makeup. I mean, some people are augmenting things. That stuff's all you can work with. That it doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. To find somebody quality, man, that's way more rare these days. To find somebody who we line up, like the physical stuff, we can we can go to the gym together, like whatever. We can work on our stuff, physical stuff. But if they are just solid. You got to weigh out, like, what's more important? Like, I'd rather go do workouts with somebody who's amazing than try and, like, sort out the madness of somebody who looks good as fucking crazy. And looks are going to change anyway over time. It's a depreciating <laughs> asset anyways. It's like cars. As soon yeah. as they come off the lot, they start losing value. Yeah. Looks go away. But, man, having somebody valuable, yeah, you're right having off, somebody yeah. who's, like, like that's a that person's a ride or die. That's a good soul. Yeah. That's a different thing. So you're gonna have to do that value assessment for yeah. yourself because the beauty stuff isn't gonna be forever anyways. But spending your time with somebody who's just awesome and shares your values and they be they they're gonna love you more than anybody and be better to you than anyone ever and vice versa. Do that. But I mean that's that's. I would say it's it's more valuable, but you're gonna to have to do your own value assessment. Yeah. Um, Richard, you, how old are you? Can I ask? Yeah, if he's like, I'm 16, I'm like, <laughs> live your life, bro. Do whatever you're gonna do. You're just yeah. Because you know? I because I feel like for a lot of people, that was more on the top of the list. Like when I was like before I was 20, like early 20s. Mm -hmm. And then you grow up, and then you realize. It's funny. Some may call it settling. I think it's just a reality of, like, I don't think you knew what you were doing. No. No one knows what we we're doing. What you're, you're just doing the best for. you can, which is, like, not good. I didn't know <laughs> what I was measuring it on. I'm like, I'm like, is it denial? What am I working on here? Is it the butts? Bargaining? Yeah. Is it butts? What am I working on here? And you're like, you know what? How about good-ass person? Yeah. How about somebody who will show up for you? Mm -hmm. How about somebody who will have your back in a thunderstorm? Like that's people who like fair weather friends. Like give me somebody who will be there when it's when you're not on top. The people who are there when you're not winning. The people who cheer for you even when you're not in first place. Yeah. Well, those ones are worth keeping around, and they may not be the most beautiful people outside, but they're the most beautiful inside. I'm 32, been fat my whole life, so I never really dated women I was super attracted to, but my ex. The evil ex. What's your ex doing? Richard Pilgrim, 1990. Creeping it real. <laughs> I like that. Creeping it real 14. Well, all right. We're all funny. just waiting for Richard. 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 <laughs> I'm a Richard. Too. I guess I could have guessed your age by the 1990, but. 
Yeah. That's funny. Let me. You let her go. Look at you. Oh, Latin Man of Steel. That's my boy. I'm still waiting for her so we can fix things. Yeah, but man, like, like, yeah, good, good on you, bro. I, I really, I'm just gonna bottom my heart to you. I think this one is a good move for you because that one was taking advantage of you. I think that you're gonna find somebody, and I, I would look for like someone who's a healer, someone who's a helper type, someone who loves to serve because you guys are a good dynamic, and you're gonna find somebody who. You make happy being with you who doesn't take so much from you. I think that uh, you're going to find somebody who's more your match. Um, so keep working on your stuff, bro, and quit letting people take advantage of you. I don't think that was a good, a good dynamic that you had there. So I'm proud of you for, for taking the courage and having those steps that, like, I'm going to stand up for my values good and for what you. I believe is right. That's awesome. Good job, dude. It takes a lot of guts to do that. So, yeah, honor you as a warrior, man. Well done. That's pretty great. Good job. Uh, Richard says, okay, so I never really dated a woman I was super attracted to, but my ex was super attractive, but she was scared of commitment. So what do you want? You want someone who won't commit to you, but looks pretty versus somebody who will be with you, ride or die, but you guys got to do some lifestyle changes? Like, you're going to have to work out anyways, man. You might as well do it with somebody who you care about. Or do you want to do it with somebody who's hot, but they won't show up for you? What are we What are we rating it on? Those I'm telling you, those those denials, babe. I'm telling you, those butts, butts, those damn butts, they'll get you. <laughs> it's so funny, Richard, how we're measuring super attractive. <clears throat> you uh, you can't. You got to go through it, man. Just own it. Latin man of steel, he said, thank you. How can I stop this feeling of waiting for? Just own it. Go through it. Be like, you know what? Waiting for what? Another paycheck I got to give away? What am I waiting for? No, waiting for what? And then go through it, and you'll realize, like, that is that is denial. You're in bargaining. You're in rose-colored glasses, Bill, bro. Take them off and go, what am I looking at here? Mm -hmm. And then you go, man, that's nonsense. I'm out of here. Then you'll move forward with a smile, man. And we'll be happy to hang out with you. Mm -hmm. That's true. Richard says, yeah, see, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> well, it seems like you got a good head on your shoulders, man. Remove it. Listen, I think that this is going to sound a little crude to some, but I think it's funny. Joe Rogan was talking to somebody. And he said, if you ever have to make any of these big dating decisions, if you ever got to do that, <sighs> he's like, before you start making a commitment to somebody who's attractive but has all these issues, he's like, he's like, jerk off first and then make a decision. He's like, after you're done, you're going to start seeing things clearly and you're going to be like, I was only dealing with this girl because she's hot, but I don't like anything else about her. Like, he's like, after you masturbate, you'll think more clearly, then make a decision. Who do you like better in that state of mind? And you're going to be like, well, in that state, it's the girl who's got high values, and she's pretty awesome. Like, I like hanging out with her. We have more fun. We laugh more. It's it's way better. But if you still got, you know, as they say, the baby batter on the brain, you're going to make dumb choices. It's going to be only physical attraction. You're going to throw all your stuff out the window, man. And so you got to fix your mindset, clear out the, the stuff that makes you make dumb little head choices, and then go, all right, which one do I like now that I'm clear-minded? You're going to find yourself making different decisions. Because you're going to be like, I don't actually like that girl very much. She's just hot. And now that I'm not interested in that for this small, brief period of time, I kind of really do like the person that the other one is. Mm -hmm. And then make a decision when you have a clear mind. Yeah. Jerry gets it. <laughs> True though, you take that you take that pressure off of you, that stupid monkey part of us. You get rid of that for a second, think clearly. You're gonna start making way easier decisions. Let's see. What's your best advice for codependents struggling to stay and obviously struggling to go? Oh, that's like that's the tagline for codependent <laughs> struggling to go. 
Um, we have to. I don't know what the the part of the dynamic that's there. Like, are they controlling, or you feel like you're connected for multiple reasons? You got Stockholm syndrome. Like, I don't know what it is that we're working through here. Um, or yeah. even like what I would really do if I was working with you, Jess, is I would really break down the part of you that has the attachment for that codependency. Is it mom? Is it dad? Or is it not loved enough from here? Are you an Enneagram two and you're trying to struggle with not being loved or being unwanted, and we have to work through your confidence, like? We'd have to figure out what's the part that makes it so you attach a need that somebody else has to fulfill that most likely is an internal one that you just never learned that skill for. Uh, it's obviously, as my long-winded ass explanation, it's a little more deep than that. I'd have to know more about you because I just made up a whole bunch of very points. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than like, oh, you just say no. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you just leave, of course. Don't worry about your program. Just get out of there. You just get on out. Get out. Get on out. Get of out there. of there. <laughs> no, you're gonna have to break down where the attachment is. It probably happened when you were a little kid. Um, most likely it was somebody who you didn't get the appreciation or love from. Um, so we have to start working backwards. There's a little bit more Freud work that's in there that ends up working better. Is the codependency started from multiple different factors? Um, I wouldn't be too too hard pressed if you really did an enneagram test. You would either be a two or a nine. What would you say? Two. Two? Yeah, I would say two. Um, you know, we got some other ones. Fours can do it too, but most likely you're probably mm -hmm. going to fall into that heart category in some way, shape, or form. So it'd either be a two or four. So I would look into that because that gives you at least a baseline for what is it your biggest fears are, what are your attachment pieces for like, I can't, I don't want to be left, I don't want to be unloved, I don't want to be not good enough, you know, I need somebody to validate me in whatever mm -hmm. way, shape, or form, or the other part of the two that's a curse is I need to be needed by somebody else, so I have to do things for them so I can get love. Yeah. <clears throat> so how can I help you? How can I help you? I need to be serving somebody who's not doing well. And this is also a part of that codependency. It can go this direction too. I have to know more about you and the dynamic to be able to help you break whatever the curse is that's been put on you for most likely when you were a little girl. So book a call and let's have a conversation because how do we do anything if I have no idea who you are or what you've mm -hmm. been through? Not to mention, can we be real when it talks about obviously struggling? Trying to fit your life stuff into these it's uh these lines here not very not very easy to do. Oh, what's up, B Bri? You were a type one. What does that mean? It means you are your main type is a perfectionist. Ooh. You do the right thing. You're gonna try and make sure you do it right. Let's book it. Yeah, all of these curses. Let's let's book the call. So it's yeah. in our it's in our bio. You yeah, can just click, click the, the link. link in the bio. It's also at the Warriors Way and Mindset.com. So that's where it's at. Book a call. Um, you'll see one of our health, our health scout, our health seeker. That's going to be Matthew. He's in there. And uh, a lot of times I jump on. So Jess, make sure you put in there in the notes that um, it's you and you, you talk to us on this so I can know which people are there, just like when Keith did um, for him booking a call so I can know which people to talk to. Uh, it, it's really tough for me because I'm running so many groups and doing so many pieces. But if I can make the calls, I try to. It's really hard to do, though. I've literally been <laughs> pulled everywhere all day. But if I can, I'll be there. So do that. But yeah, we break curses. So working with us is definitely the idea. If you work with me, I can show you how to break these curses. It does take time and some deep work. It's really the idea. If you work with me, I can show you how to break these curses. It does take time and some deep work. But these are breakable. Like we've we've actually got a person right now who's fighting that curse and we're breaking those curses right mm -hmm. now. So these are beatable. You do not have like a disorder. You don't have a hereditary issue. You're not <laughs> broken. Um, you just have a, a curse on you that's most likely yeah. in some way, shape, or form generational and we'll smash it out of there for you. I'll show you how to break it. Mm -hmm. We've killed this one before though. It can be done. You're not broken. You're not messed up. There's nothing wrong with you. You just have to get rid of the behavior that's not yeah. authentic. Also, if you were giving your friend advice, what would you tell them to do? Because that could be the go-to the six, too. Oh, well, I don't know if Jess is the one. Bibri is the no, one. No, Jess. Oh. That's what I'm talking to. 
Yeah, I don't think she. I think she would too. Probably, but you're asking me to ask a question. Yeah. The helper. All right. Should we go? You look tired, babe. I'm exhausted. Let's do it. I've been up since six o'clock this morning. All right. So for those of you who are wondering, like, where are we at? Um, we are. We're in Illinois. We are on (laughs) WarriorsWayMindset.com. Check out our stuff. You can also download um, the first book that we have. Everything is a choice. Uh, co-authored with Dr. Oren Cox, PhD. We both wrote this book together. Um, check out some of our stuff that we have there. We're giving you a free download. Um, so you can click our link, download the book for free. Just a free audio book, or not audio book, but a digital copy. Um, I, at some point, I will do the audio for it, but it's just not a high priority now, considering we're working on the second book, which is the map out of hell going through your grieving cycles and association with the enemy within and how all of that works. So we're working on that right now. Uh, not to mention, people are working with us in our program all yeah. around the world. And that's going to be the Warrior's Way mindset. And that's where you can book a call, hang out with us, join our next group. We're starting our next group soon. And we would love to see some new warriors come in there and have the willingness to fight the hardest battle of all, which yeah. is the one inside here. 